Hello my soccer universe, let's do a quick one on the game yesterday between Croatia and the Netherlands. I should have put it the other way around because it was nominally the Netherlands home game. However, they played in their away jerseys while Croatia played in their home jerseys, which was one thing that I didn't quite get. I was also impressed to see how many Croatians were actually in Rotterdam. Usually when I see the Kuip for a, a Dutch national team game, it's all orange. No, there was plenty of checkerboards in red and whites there, which I found really, really good. And they had one sector that was fully just Croatia and the rest was interspersed. This was a decidedly non-partisan crowd in a way. Yes, they were when the anthems were played, you could hear that there were more Dutch people there. Duh, it is in Rotterdam. It is right there in the Lions then. But Croatia, uh, Croatia fans showed up in force. As I said, for me, the jersey matchup did not make much sense. I guess it provided more contrast than if I have orange against navy. But I don't mind no orange against navy. So yeah, take it for what, 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 what it was. Um, the thing I have to say is that the game was probably way better than anyone expected. And yes, it took a little while to get going. Uh, also, my attention needed a while to get going. <laughs> the work had me completely distracted in a way. Uh, but you could see, okay, there were uh, the players in there that just had played in the Champions League final on Saturday. So, uh, in that sense, I honestly have to say, I love the idea of the Nations League. I love the idea of the Final Four. I think we have to find a better slot for it in the calendar. Wouldn't this be better played... You know, I actually think that a Nations League campaign should probably be played within a calendar year to lead up to something bigger one and not have it so um, spread out that we had now a group stage uh, last year and then we wait, wait and wait and then we get to the final four which is tucked on at the end of the season where you could feel some players were not quite yet there. However, on the other side, uh, to, to, to be fair, once the game got going and once it counted, that all was lost. They were really, every player was there and gave it their, their, their best and we got a really, really good game in the end. As an early stage, I always thought that Croatia had a little bit more control of, of the game, but the Netherlands were uh, dangerous if they needed to be and that's exactly what happened. How they got the 1-0 where Vifa finds Daniel Malen. Uh, where suddenly three uh, Dutchies were f not covered and Marlon had it easy to make it 1-0. But you could definitely say that uh, Croatia was uh, the better team already. Not by much, but uh, that came then in the second half, where Croatia really ra ramped up the pressure. And then Cody Gakpo miss, uh, touches a ball in, in a way Luka Modric is running past him. Quick pull. Penalty. Uh, it was not much, but it was enough for a penalty. I think that's all we have to say there. And Kramaric down the middle. And again, I'm wondering why don't goalkeepers stay upright for once? It is. Uh, this is for me. I mean, I don't know whether I think that most players that decide to go down the middle, they have decided that early on. Yes, you change. That's fine. But honestly. I think goalkeepers should really start to think about the third option. It's not three options because there are so many penalties put down the middle. Why don't you just stay put for once in a while? Because you look stupid? Maybe. But, you know, uh, I think you have a chance this way. You really have have, have, have a chance. It also would kill all those Panenkas. Um, Anthony Panenka in air uh, in... <laughs> in Ehren, <laughs> in German, uh, you know, we all remember him, great player, uh, did something really incredible in the 1976 Euro, Euro final, how it gets a little bit too much with the whole thing, but I digress. Uh, so it's 1-1 one, one for uh, between the old those two, and then you could see the Croatia just kicked in the, in the, in the next gear, and especially the midfield. <laughs> Modric, Brozovic, and all those guys kicked in into the next year, completely took the game, uh, the scruff off the neck, and the Dutch were reeling and just uh, hang, 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 hang on. And I really liked the way that the second goal for Croatia came, where um, the Dutch had numbers in the box. 
but Croatia was allowed to pass around a teeny bit and then uh, you say Ivanozic uh, has the ball and he's look, looking up and there's four or five Dutch defenders and there's Pajalic being covered and he makes it one second, he makes a step out completely uncovered and at that moment Ivanozic puts it into his path and he can pull and he can pull it away and at that point I have, have to say yes I was more for the Dutch because the Dutch are one, one of my favorite teams but I could see that the Croatia fully deserved that lead and probably should have finished this in re, 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 regulation because every, everything thereafter was more or less desperation from Ronald Koeman uh, yes he brought on Weghorst early on it was in 1-1 he brought in Van Alden, uh, Bergwijn, Noah Lang once those came on uh, there was a little bit more pressure because Croatia started to hang back and get all defensive players in like your Erlic, Maja, Stanisic and so on uh, which yeah it was clear where this was going there will be crosses in and then let's hope that the Dutch uh, will convert somehow uh, Nathan Akim almost made a super acrobatic goal could have placed it maybe a tad better but you know it's hard when you're with the back of the goal and play with the top of your foot it was it was re, re, really really cool, but in, in in the end, in one of those last gap changes, the ball falls into Noah Lang, who doesn't yank it, but a rather controlled, puts it high in, and it's two two, and all the momentum was with with the Dutch. However, it stopped the game stopped right there, and then um, starting over time, I really feel that the Dutch might have the upper hand still, but that was settled very quickly. Especially with Petkovic coming on the last attacking option, and the Dutch, you know, had, were now very offensive, were a little bit more open on the back. Not that there was much happening. I mean, Motor had had the ball a little bit on the left side, so plays it over to Petkovic, who takes a shot around Van Dijk in such a way and that the goalie does, doesn't get it. It was actually a really good shot, and it's 3 2 for Croatia. And that was more or less the game. And then if uh, Malasia makes such a stupid uh, wrestle move <laughs> in a way, uh, gives another penalty away and this time Modric converts and it's 4-2 Croatia. They also scored a fifth one through Pet Pet, which that didn't count. But Croatia fully deserved that win. And they're in their first UEFA final, potentially going for the first trophy. And if you look at this Croatia team, they again went into this tournament as outsiders. Mainly in this game because of home field, field advantage, which was not a fair factor anymore. And I'm at this moment really cons considering not uh, considering home field advantage or reducing the home field advantage effect uh, greatly in uh, my calculations. Um, they are the best team in there. Just look at the players and how much they give for their own country. I I thought maybe home field advantage could put the uh, Dutch through. But the more I thought about it, this is a really good team. And the Netherlands are a little bit of, 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 of shambles. And I see also that the other two teams in the comp competition are not as settled as Croatia. Whatever my model will say, I think that Croatia can very well win this one. Tonight in the evening we have Spain against Italy. Uh, well, let's see when I get the review videos because in the morning I'm teaching so it might be a tad later. But you know, uh, so, so, so be it. But Croatia will be waiting for the winner of that one. My hunch is Spain, although Italy uh, are, oh, are the slight favorites, but my hunch is Spain, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, despite it, a very underwhelming squad against Spain, also trying to find themselves, and Italy is similar. So in that sense, Croatia is a more, more settled team, and I think it's time that Croatia, who I think are the best team overall when you take population size into, in, in this country, they're the most successful nation in soccer if you take uh population size in, in account uh the netherlands would be would have been being close but at the moment croatia is much better and so there you go did you watch the game you say how did you enjoy it give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and i'll talk to you soon about the nature's league bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking on the bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye